We gotta move now. Skill number five. Skill number five. Closing. Yeah. Closing. I'm gonna give you a simple series of questions for you to ask at the end of any presentation. You do a PBR, ask these questions. You do a Zoom call, ask these questions. You show a video, ask these questions. Sample your product, ask these questions. Three-way call, ask these questions. Sit down with somebody for coffee when you're done, ask these questions. Question number one, what did you like best based upon what I just showed you? What did you like best? Question number one, one of the most powerful questions. I've, I've tried them all over 30 years. I've tried, what do you think? Not to good results. The best question I've ever come up with works in every country around the world is what did you like best? This forces a person to go into their mind and think of something good. Question number two. On a scale of one to ten, based upon what I've just shared with you, where are you? One being you have zero interest and ten being you're ready to get started right this second. Where are you? Guess what you're going to get a lot of? Fives, sixes. If they say seven, they're joining. People won't say ten because they don't want to seem like a cheap date. <laughs> Here's a tip for you. Anything over a one is good. <laughs> Seriously. If they say two, I'm a two. Well, we told them one is they have zero interest. Two must mean there's something there, but they're skeptical. Might take more time. You're going to have this conversation over the long term with them anyway. Just understand that this one might take a little bit more time. Fantastic. Scale of one to ten, where are you? Just get a temperature reading. Question number three deals with how much money would be worth their time? How much money would be worth their time? Now, here's how I ask the question, and this is refined over many, many years. What's your name, sir? Michael. Hi, Michael. How you doing? Pleasure. So if I talk to Michael and I say, hey, what'd you like best? I just showed you a video. What'd you like best? Make something up. I love the concept of getting paid every month. You like the concept of getting paid every month. Fantastic. On a scale of 1 to 10, where are you? One, zero interest, 10, you're ready to get started right the second. A six, fabulous. So let me ask you another question. Hypothetically, if you, if you got started in this business part-time, how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? $1,000 a month. $1,000. If you're doing this part-time, how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? The, the, the words worth your time are really, really critical. Hypothetically is also very helpful. Off the record, just between you and me, let's just, you know, spitball this. How much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? He says 1000 a month. Do I care what he says? All I care is that he gives me a number. He says, ah, I don't know. Eh, just play with me. How much? Eh, I'm not so sure. Just give me a number. Pick one. Okay, fine, $500, $1,000, whatever the number is. Question number four. It just, it, this will flow naturally as you practice it a little bit. How many hours a week, realistically, could you commit to developing that $1,000 monthly income? Five to, ten hours a week. Five to 10 hours a week. You're gonna get a lot of those. How many months, question number five, how many months would you be willing to work those five, 10 hours a week while you're developing a thousand monthly income? Six months. Question number six is just if I would you. If I could show you, Mike, Mike? Michael J. Michael J. If I could show you, Michael, how to develop a thousand dollar monthly income working five to 10 hours a week over the course of the next six months, would you be ready to get started? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know how hard it is for him to say no to that? Every single one of those answers was what he wanted. Every one. All I did was ask the questions. So this works with a positive person. It works with a negative person. 
Somebody want to just uh, bring me a microphone. Somebody bring me a microphone. I want somebody to be the most negative person you know that has no interest in building a network marketing business. Who wants to, who wants to be my, my uh, guinea pig? Somebody? You want to do it? All right, stand up, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Hillary. Hi, Hillary. Uh, yeah. All right, Hillary, let's just say I just showed you a video. Okay. And I say, Hillary, based on what I just showed you, what did you like best? I didn't really like anything. I mean, how do you even do that? All right. No sense to me. You didn't really like anything. Fantastic. So on a, on a scale of one to 10, one being you have zero interest, <laughs> And 10, you're ready to get started right this moment. Where are you? Where would you put yourself? Dude, I'm not like a negative 500. That seems like a scam to me. All right, fantastic. Scam to you, negative 500. Let me ask you a question, Hillary. Off the record, just between you and me, and I'm not assuming that you're going to do this, but you, you would, of course, be not looking the other way <laughs> when we would do this, would you? <laughs> You gotta at least look at me. Oh, okay. So, 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 hypothetically, you don't seem like a perfect candidate, but I'm hypothetically, I get it. I, get, I totally get it. I'm with you. Hypothetically, off the record, just for fun, if you did decide to do something with this business, how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this worth your time? Realistic, what would be worth your time? Hmm. I mean, you know why worth your time is such an important phrase? Everybody has a number. You want to make X money? Some people don't. Everybody has a number that would be worth their time. The richest person you know has a number that would be worth their time. So, so if I was going to really do this part-time and start, we're assuming I'm... Uh, yeah, we'll assume whatever you want. Just, just for your time, what would, it, what, what would you need to earn per month to make it even worth it? I mean... If I'm gonna leave my amazing job at Jamba Juice, I gotta be making at least like two grand part-time. All right, two grand part-time. <laughs> Let me ask you this, how many hours a week do you think you could realistically commit to work in something that was actually paying you $2,000 a month part-time? I mean, in between all the stuff I do and everything. Yeah. I guess five to 10 hours, five to if ten. I had to, if, if I really, to. really had to. I'm not saying, I'm not saying <laughs> you, you could or should, but if you had to, five or 10 hours. All right, how many months would you give it, working five to 10 hours while you were building up to a $2,000 monthly income, realistically? I mean, I'd want to see some the like initial results. And I like, get it. And you like, you want to see some results, but let's just assume that you're going towards that goal in some kind of methodical fashion. Okay. If that was the I case, mean, how many months would you give it? I mean, I feel like half a year seems fair. Half a year seems fair? Yeah. All right, fantastic. So let me ask you this, Hillary. I know you're a minus 500, but if I could show you how to develop a $2,000 monthly income working five to 10 hours a week over the course of the next six months, would you at least be willing to take the next step and learn a little bit more? Yeah, I guess I'd be interested. See, it's so hard. It's so hard. She was a negative 500. How hard is it? I'm not kidding. If you go through these questions, it's so hard for a person to say, absolutely, I'm not interested in learning more. At least at a minimum, you can get them to take the next step. You can I'm, get them to I'm learn there. a little bit more, get them to find out about the product, get them to meet somebody, get them to come to an event at, at a minimum. And you keep the conversation going. See what I'm saying? Now, if somebody's reasonably positive, you ask these questions, all you're doing is creating a world that they get to live in based upon their wishes and dreams. If I tell her, you want to make $10,000 a month and she's working at Jamba Juice, it's going to be too much. It's going to shut her down. If I tell her you want to make $500 a month and she's already making $4,000, she's going to say that's not worth my time. 
So I've got to ask the questions, let her fill in the blanks, and then say, if I could show you how to do it, would you be willing to take the next step with me? That will do what you need to do and take all the people that you have that are thinking about it and move them into a better category. Now it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to say, yes, let's do it. Or yes, I'm willing to continue the conversation and learn more. And then you can ask it again later if they're not totally ready to join. Do you understand? Now, are these questions hard to learn? No. How long do you want to be um, incompetent <laughs> at helping people get started? How many years? How many years? How many months? You don't, would you like to just be competent, get it over with? Yes. You, can, you can become totally world class at this particular skill in less than 30 days. By January 1st, if you just practice this over and over and over with different people, if we had more time, I'd have you role play it a little bit, practice it over and over and over, you'd be amazing at it. If I told you I'd pay you $250,000 for a job on a salary with benefits, but you had to master this skill and not be able to be stumped, and you had to get p past a panel of judges, and I gave you 72 hours to become amazing at it, you would figure out how to become amazing at it in 72 hours. The question is, how long do you want to stay incompetent? How long do you want to be unequipped? Get it over with. You're just going to do this for the next 100 years anyway. You might as well get the suffering over with. All right? Give Hillary a big round of applause, would you? Thank you. Most of the time in network marketing, finding prospects is common sense. What Magic Johnson talked about this morning, common sense sometimes isn't taught. We're told that this is magic beans. You're just supposed to join and talk to a few people and throw some magic beans into the ground and pretty soon you're going to be on stage getting your trophy. There's some skills involved. Why are skills important? Skills build confidence. What does confidence do? It causes you to take more action. What does action do? Get you better results. It's just as simple as that. So get these over with. Master the ability to find quality prospects to talk to and never run out. Master the ability to invite people to at least understand. Take a look at what it is you have to offer with a reasonably open mind. Master the presentation. Use tools and events to do the presentation, but ultimately learn how to say the words. Master the follow-up. Keep the conversation going. Master closing. At the end of that, I panicked for, you know, I froze up at the end. I was like, oh, uh, what'd you think? Person says, uh, I need to pray about it. Okay, cool. <laughs> what do you say to that? I don't know. I tried everything with that one. I said, you don't need to. I already did, and God told me. I'm a messenger. <laughs> just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> so, helping people make a decision. That's all we're doing. We're not twisting arms. We're not trying to, to bully somebody into making a decision they don't want to make. We're not, we don't need a customer that bad or a distributor is going to lay there and do nothing anyway. All we're doing is sifting through. And you know what we're trying to do? We're trying to capture the imagination of another human being and let them dream again. Because you know what happens when we're kids? Our imagination is crazy, right? Depending on how we were, we were brought up. We're going to be sports stars. We're going to be TV stars. We're going to be ballerinas. We're going to be, uh, you know, race car drivers, astronauts. And then we go to school and they just start telling us, be reasonable, be reasonable, be reasonable, be reasonable. Accept your limitations, right? And then when we get out of school, our dreams are still like there. You know what I mean? They're in there. But in the meantime, we got to pay the bills. So we just take a job in the meantime. We just start waiting on tables in the meantime. We just start 
doing somebody else's books in the meantime. We just start being somebody's assistant in the meantime just to pay the bills. And once we start doing that, we need a place to stay. So we get a place to stay. We need a bed. So we buy a bed. We need Wi-Fi. So we sign up for Wi-Fi. We need electricity, so we sign up for electricity and we get our cable and we get all this other kind of stuff. We need a car to get back and forth to this temporary thing that isn't filling up our dreams, but it's taking care of things in the meantime. Maybe we start a family during this process. Now there's obligations. And pretty soon, what was just a temporary thing just for now until the dream showed up, becomes the thing that is wrapped around our neck, and we settle. And by about age 30, 35, we go, you know what? That wasn't reasonable. We watch enough movies that say sitting, sitting there doing nothing is noble. So we settle. And the dream just turns into this tiny little acorn it's still in our gut. It bothers us sometimes. There's sometimes there's some sleep dis sleepless nights looking at the ceiling, knowing that we're selling ourselves at 2% of our potential. We know it. But then we shake ourselves and say, yeah, yeah. But we got to take care of that student loan. Yeah, but in the meantime, there's a pride in taking care of your family. My kids aren't going hungry. Yeah, it's okay. So you know what we do when we go talk to somebody? We say, listen, you know that thing? It doesn't need to die. There's another life for it. Now, it might not be as an astronaut. It might be something slightly different. It might take a different course. But the dream of you being a creator, you having purpose, you creating a legacy, you contributing to the lives of other people, you making other people happy and fulfilled, that dream is real. Now, to get away from all of this bondage that has wrapped you like string year after year after year after year till you're practically mummified, to get out of that... It's going to take a little bit of work and you're going to have to remember again what your dream is worth. It's going to take a little work. But it's worth it. And we have this company with this product that will help you do it and you can start right where you are and start to build something. That's what we do. We let them know. It's not dead. It doesn't have to be dead. Your contribution is not just laundry and groceries and paying the bills and getting through one more month. That doesn't have to be your legacy. Your legacy can be something much, much bigger than that. That's at the core of it. That's what really is, fuels all of this stuff. So why do we do all this stuff? To just grab this person and... Tell them, listen, we can do this. You and me. One plus one adds up to a hundred. Let's go. I believe in you. Together we can do something special. And I'll make you a promise. I'll never let you play small. You understand? That's at the, that's at the core of this stuff, man. So, those are the five skills. You ready to go to number six? How many people have at least eight pages of notes so far? Fantastic. Skill, skill number six is getting your new person started right. This is where duplication lives. Duplication happens inside of this skill. Helping a person get started effectively. Helping a person... Create some action, helping a person get some results. Because it's like an egg timer. I sign this guy up, I got to turn the egg timer, and if he doesn't get some results before that bell chimes, ding! He's gone. 
If he doesn't get a customer pretty quick, if he doesn't get a great product experience pretty quick, if he doesn't get a distributor earn a earn a check of a dollar or something pretty quick, he's going to be gone. So let me show you how this works. In every network marketing career, there's a line. And on this side of the line, it's easy to stay and build and grow. And on this side of the line, it's easy to quit. Remember I told you all of the stuff that we do is really buying time for a person to develop into the ultimate influencer that they have inside of them. This whole game is about buying time. One of my mentors told me something, gosh, 20 years ago, rocked my world. He said, Eric, you want to know the secret to success in network marketing? I said, what's that? He said, here it is convince people to stay in the business 90 more days. I said, what? He said, yeah, that's the whole secret. They start having doubts, convince them to stay 90 more days. They're not sure, get them to stay till Easter. They don't know if it's for them, get them to stay till Independence Day. They're still not sure, get them to stay till Thanksgiving. 90 more days, 90 more days, 90 more days. Get it convince them somehow to stay around because your job is if you do that long enough, eventually the penny drops and they decide to really build and do something on their own without your push. But in the meantime, it's a push. Keep them around. Guess what? You're either moving up or you're moving out in network marketing. That's what it is. It's up or out. Unless you're going to be a customer, then you can just hang out. But for the rest of it, it's up or out. Now, one side of the line, it's easy to quit. Other side, it's easy to stay. What would cause people, give me some examples, just shout them out, that would cause people to stay in your business? A paycheck. A free product. A health transformation. Sorry? Let's say the attendant event. Recognition. Perks. Friends. Friends is huge. Huh? Travel. Let's say they, they win a trip or something, they go travel somewhere. Community. Let's get back simpler. Think about the first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Huh? Just one customer in the first 30 days might help somebody. One friend in the first 30 days might cause them to stay around for another 30 days. One little paycheck of a dollar or more Show them that this is for real. A great product experience. Yeah, if they personally grow. Right? All of this, you know what all these different things do? Is it buys you time. If they grow, yeah, if they rank advance, Hmm? A Mercedes, yeah. So all of these things, what if they tell the world that they're in? What if they go and tell their whole world, I joined this company and I'm going to the top? Will that cause them to stay longer than if they wouldn't have? Of course. Little things. Making a friend. Getting connected. Going to the company convention. 
attending an event, getting a product experience, getting recognized, getting appreciated, being part of a community. All these little things make it easier for them to stay. Now, what's the opposite of these things makes it easy to quit? If they don't get a check, if they don't earn enough so their products is free, if they don't have a positive product experience, or they don't even take the product, it's easier to quit. If they don't rank advance, it's easier to quit. If they don't get a customer, it's easy to quit. If they don't tell the world, if they hide out, it's easy to quit. They don't get recognized, it's easy to quit. If they don't make friends, it's easy to quit. If they don't personally grow, it's easy to quit. So what I want you to think about in this particular skill, I just want to, I'm going to talk to you more about systems tomorrow, but let me just talk to you most, um, quickly about systems here. Systems are critical if you want to have big growth and duplication in your organization. They're critical. Now, here's how you know if you have a system. Everyone knows what the system is. Everyone does it. And it works. That's when you know you have a system. Everybody knows, everybody does it, and it works. This is very rare in network marketing because most people don't know what your system is, even if you think they do. Most people don't do it, even if they say they do. And it probably works, but the first two are the critical element. And when people look at a system, what you want them to say in their minds, this looks simple. I think it will work. And I think I could do it. That's you, what you want people to think about when they look at your system. That looks simple. I think it'll work and I think I could do it. And here's how you know you have a system. If everyone knows it, everyone does it, and it's working in the marketplace. Now, Again, I'm going to talk about this more tomorrow, and there's over 100 companies represented in this room, but there are several systems that you must have if you want to develop rock-solid uh, growth within your organization. System number one is a customer acquisition system. You tell people, this is what you do. These are the tools that you use. These are the words that you say. Here's how you get a customer. Step, 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 step. Number two, a distributor acquisition system. This is what you do. This is where it gets a little bit more fuzzy. Most of you have a million of these based upon a million different personalities. Everyone knows, everyone does, and it works. Do you have that? You need to be constantly in search of that with a distributor acquisition system, complete with tools, words, trainings, everything else, to be able to simplify, remove too much thinking from too many people, and have people have a track to run on. Three, a getting started system. You want to make this work, getting started, you've got to have a getting started process that is standardized. If you want to have long-term growth, I can whisper a getting started system into your ear, but four generations down, it's gone. If I have a standardized one, even if it's simple, basic, this, 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 now you've got a chance. People can add their personality to it, but ultimately, it's really critical that this becomes standardized. Simple, basic. Now, you might say, no, I got one. It's standardized. And if I could ask 10 people on your team, what's the getting started system? And they won't tell me the same answer. That's where a leader needs to show up to make sure that that process happens. So everybody knows it, everybody does it, and it works. Number four, 
is event promotion system. One of the most important things you can do, and we're going to talk about skill number seven, promoting events in a moment. But an event promotion system, do you have a system to promote from convention to convention? Or is it just you got to get excited? Is there a system for it? If you don't have one, you need to establish one. What's your event promotion system from event to event inside of your organization that's causing you to be able to have more growth than anybody else? And five, an influencer development system. We're going to talk about that tomorrow morning. How do you identify potential influencers and mentor them in a systematic way to develop more talent within your organization instead of putting more and more pressure on the same influencers that have been in place for too long?